magical, mystical, mystical, magical, mystical, magical, magical, mystical. Oh, hello, my pretty. I wasn't expecting to see you today. Don't be shy, come closer. Today, we are making a few magical, mystical things, and I hope you'll stay to join. Well, let's, let's begin. 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 Hello fellow Conscious Crafters, welcome or welcome back. My name is Sterling and I'm the artist and founder behind Cactus Lady Creation. On this channel I share nature crafts, thrift flips, and upcycle crafts. In this video I will be sharing three magical DIYs with you in the spirit of Halloween. If you enjoy this video, please help it out by simply clicking the like button below and also feel free to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of future DIYs and tutorials as I release them every week. I hope this video will inspire you to create something wherever you are. For this first DIY, I will be showing you how to make a spell jar. First I purified the bottle which is simply a bottle that I am repurposing for this and I'm lighting my cedarwood stick and making sure that the smoke reaches the inside of the bottle to cleanse it energetically. These are some of the ingredients that I'm using in my jar, which will have the purpose of connecting with ancestors and bringing healing on every level including mentally, financially, physically, and spiritually. First I wanted to make some black salt. Salt is great for purifying while black is the color of protection and grounding your energy. To do this, I first mixed the ashes in my cauldron with some table salt. I used the head of my cedarwood stick to mix it, but you can also use a spoon. Next, I wanted to add some black pepper, which opens up the third eye chakra and will open the mind to the spiritual realm, which is great for connecting with ancestors. Next, I wanted to make the salt black, so I added a bit of black food dye until it was the color that I wanted. But if you have activated charcoal, that is especially perfect for this, because then you can also take advantage of its healing and protective properties. The first thing that I added to the jar is moss and lavender. Moss brings luck, especially with matters of money, and lavender brings peace and healing. I also made a little funnel with some paper to make it easier to add things into the bottle. While adding things to the jar, you can thank spirit, God, the universe, or whatever you call the energy that is higher, placing intention and gratitude for each item that you add. Next, I wanted to add some rosemary, which is a great herb for remembrance of those who have passed on into the spirit world. Then I placed some fennel seeds, which are also for healing and love, but also bring courage and strength. Then I add popcorn seeds for abundance and healing. Next, I wanted to add rose petals to the jar. Rose, which aligns with the root, sacral, and heart chakra, will bring love and desires to action. Feel free to use whatever herbs or oils that you would like to, depending on what you want to do, the metaphysical properties of each of them, and also what you have on hand. Then I added a bit of black salt that I made earlier. Next I wanted to add a little selenite crystal which is powerful for bringing healing to the mind, body and soul and also for cleansing negative energy and it aligns with the crown chakra and angelic realm where ancestors are which is perfect for this jar. Then I added one of the first fall leaves that I found of the season on one of my nature walks, 
which symbolizes the veil between living and the dead, and is believed to be thinning right now, especially on Halloween. It symbolizes the beauty and death, and I wrote a wish on it and then placed it into the jar. Lastly, I placed a cork from a wine bottle that I had to seal the spell jar, and then on top I placed a black cactus wax seal. The cactus is the plant of hidden treasures as it stores water in its stems and roots. It's also the plant of protection and endurance. I also placed more wax on the cork and this is how it came out. I really enjoyed creating this spell jar and will be placing it in a really special space in my home. These are perfect to put on your altar or to give away to a friend. What are your favorite herbs to work with? Or what would you put in your spell jar? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments below. I wanted to create a special besom or broom and these are the supplies that I'll be using for this. First, I wanted to prep my broomstick for this project, so I grabbed my handsaw and trimmed the branch to the size that I wanted. I also already cured this branch by soaking it in water for a few days and then letting it dry out completely. Next, I took my pruning shears and cut off the little bumpy bits of the branch to smooth it out. Then I took a coarse 80 grit sand block and gave the branch a really thorough sanding. Next I buffed out the broomstick with a finer 120 grit sand block which will make it nice and smooth. Next I grabbed my juke cord and separated the strands because I just needed one long thin strand. Then I tied it onto the broomstick with just two regular overhand knots. Then I separated out the dried lavender, hydrangea, and the green filler leaves that I wanted to add, and I sorted them into piles. To make the broom, first I grabbed a small bunch of lavender, tapped on it to make the stems as even as possible, and then held it where I wanted it to be along the branch. Then I wrapped the cord around the lavender bunch and all the way around the stick in order to hold it in place. Next, I placed another small bunch of lavender on the stick, but on the opposite side of the first one. I made sure to hold it in place where I wanted it to be and then wrapped the cord around that second bunch, just like the first. Then I placed another small bunch of lavender on the stick, but in between the first two bunches. And I placed another bunch on the opposite side of that third bunch. At this point, I wrapped the cord around all of the first layer of lavender about two times. Then I continued adding the rest of the dried flowers that I had in the same way until it was the thickness that I wanted. Traditionally, the broom is a tool for cleaning, letting go, and also astral travel. 
You can be mindful of the properties of the plants and flowers that you add to your broom to aid with what you need for this purpose. Once it was thick enough, I wrapped the cord around a few times and then hot glued it to secure it and trimmed the bottoms of the flower stems to be even. Next, I grabbed some more jute and left the yarn quite thick this time and then wrapped it around all the dried flowers using a gathering knot. To do this, I simply folded the cord leaving a short tail at the top and a loop at the bottom and then I wrapped the long end of the cord around all the dried flower bundle until it was as thick as I liked. Each time I wrapped the cord around the bundle, I wrapped it below the previous one. Once I wrapped the cord around enough times to reach the desired thickness, I placed the long end of the cord through the bottom loop. Then I pulled up on the short end of the tail, and once the knot is placed inside of the part where you wrapped the cord, it is then secured, and it can be trimmed on both ends. Next I wanted to add some moss, so I used a hot glue gun to add moss to the middle of the jute cord. And lastly, I wanted to add a little bead to the broom to give it a nice little detail. And with an embroidery needle and a bit of jute thread, I sewed it into the broom. Now all I had to do was get the broom ready to hang, and to do this I used a staple gun and stapled some jute cord to the back, tied a knot at the end of the cord, and now it is ready to hang. Once it was finished, this is how it turned out. I really loved creating this craft and now look forward to creating a little broom like this every year. It's so versatile and fun to create and these are perfect to place on your porch or inside by your front door to keep out the bad energy and bring some positive, whimsical energy to your home. For this final project, I wanted to create a wand, so I grabbed my pruning shears and trimmed the twig so that it could have a flat top. If you want to check out how I cure twigs and small branches for projects, check out the video in the card above. Using my sanding block, I sanded the tip of the wand so that the crystal can sit on top of it evenly. Next, I grabbed a crystal quartz, which is powerful for healing and creativity for this wand, 
but feel free to use whatever crystal you may like. And I used some silver craft wire, folded it in half, and wrapped it around the crystal. In the back of the crystal, I overlapped one part of the craft wire on top of the other to tighten and secure the wrap. Then I took the craft wire and wrapped it around the crystal again in this way. I overlapped the wire again in the back and wrapped the wire around the crystal one last time. Then I placed the crystal on top of the tip of the twig. Next I wrapped one section of the wire around the twig a few times. As you do this, you want to make sure that you wrap the wire tight to make it secure. You can also gently twist the crystal in the opposite way to make it even tighter as you do this. And then I wrapped the other section around the twig in the opposite direction, overlapping it with the first section in front of the twig to make it decorative. I continued wrapping the wire down the twig and once I got to the bottom, I wrapped each section of the wire around tightly a few times and trimmed the ends. If you like this nature craft, you might like some of the other ones that I have. Check them out in the card above in the description box below. Then using my needle nose pliers tool, I tucked in the ends of the craft wire along the stick. Next, I wanted to add some moss to the tip of the wand, so using a hot glue gun, I simply wrapped the moss around the top to give it a little forest vibe. Then I wanted to add some more crystal beads to this piece, so I used some head pins and wrapped them around the craft wire with my pliers to fix them to the wand. There are so many different ways to add beads, but this is what worked for me. I hope this will inspire you to experiment and create your own wand with what you have on hand.
After adding a few more beads in the same way, I added a chain to connect them all. Next, I placed a jump ring and a Milagro's charm bead of some fairy wings on it. To make a handle for my wand, I simply used some black chiffon ribbon to tie it on to the wand using a gathering knot, like I showed you earlier in this video. After adding a dab of hot glue and a bit more moss to the handle, this is how the wand turned out. I really enjoyed making these magical DIYs and hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, please click the like button, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell to be notified of the future tutorials and videos. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. Until then, have a magical season.